the Maharashtra Energy Department on Tuesday signed an MOU of INR 50,000 crore with Renew Power, one of India's leading renewable energy companies. At Davos for investments in renewable energy in the state for the next six to seven years. It was signed in the presence of Maharashtra Tourism and Environment Minister Aditya Thakari in Davos, where he is attending the World Economic Forum along with State Industries Minister Subhash Desai and Energy Minister Nitin Raut. MSADCL Managing Director Vijay Singhal, who signed the MOU, told TOI that this was one of the biggest investments for the state in the energy sector. He further said that the MOU has been signed for renewable energy generation in the state through solar and wind. MSEDCL also tweeted, big update from RCMD Vijay Singhal, IAS signed an MOU of 50,000 crore rupees with Mr. Suman Sinha, CMD, Renew Power in the presence of Hanbal Cabinet Minister. This is path breaking for Maharashtra's renewable energy sector. The project was executed by Tata Power Solar Systems Limited, an arm of Tata Power, within the stipulated timeline of three and a half months on 600 acres of land. Tata Power Renewable Energy on Thursday announced the commissioning of a 100 megawatt solar project for Maharashtra State Electricity Distribution Company Limited at Batur in Maharashtra. Tata Power Renewable Energy Limited, one of India's largest renewable energy companies and a wholly owned subsidiary of Tata Power, has commissioned 100 megawatt project for Maharashtra State Electricity Distribution Company Limited in Patur, Maharashtra, a company statement said. According to the statement, the installation comprising over 411,900 monocrystalline PV modules is expected to reduce around 234 million tons of carbon dioxide annually. The project was executed by Tata Power Solar Systems Limited, an arm of Tata Power, within the stipulated timeline of three and a half months on 600 acres of land. State-owned Gas Authority of India Limited will invest INR 6000 Pro in the next three years in renewables, a top official said on Monday. The investment can go up by an additional INR 20,000 crore by 2030, Gale India Chairman and Managing Director Manoj Jain told reporters here. Gale's Director Rakesh Kumar Jain said the company, which reported a 112% jump in 2021-22 post-tax net profit at 10,364 crore rupees, has outlined an overall capital expenditure plan of up to INR 40,000 crore in the next five years, which will cover a wide array of areas. This will entail borrowings of up to INR 20,000 crore, while the rest will come from internal accruals, the director added. Its chairman said it is looking at almost 3 gigawatt of renewables capacity by 2030, which will include 1 gigawatt to start with in the next three years. The company is undertaking a liquid hydrogen capacity addition right now and the progress done on the prototype will influence its overall investments, Manoj Jain said. Adding that a call on the same will be taken after 18 months. Delhi has directed 81 thermal power plants to reduce coal-fired generation and offset the decline with solar power. The exercise is expected to cut coal usage for power generation by 34.7 mnt per year and reduce carbon emissions by over 60 mnt per year, according to India's Power Ministry. The decision as part of the country's broader plans to achieve 500 gigawatts of renewable power capacity by 2030, although India is lagging in terms of meeting renewable energy targets. India's renewable energy capacity is currently at 111.4 gigawatts, far from its target of 175 gigawatts by this year and well below the target of 500 gigawatts by 2030. The Commission for Air Quality Management has allowed the use of certain types of fossil fuel in specific industrial units. Apart from these, all other air polluting units need to switch to PNG or biomass fuel by September 30th. The directives apply to the national capital region and the state of Uttar Pradesh. Officials of the Uttar Pradesh Pollution Control Board said that the CAQM has relaxed conditions of its previous directives issued in February. The CAQM earlier said that industrial units in NCR will have to completely switch over to PNG or biomass fuel by September 30th in areas where PNG supply infrastructure is available. For other areas not having PNG supply infrastructure, the Commission fixed the deadline to be December 31st. It also noted that failing to comply with the order will lead to closure of the units.